Okay, this is uh, looking to the southeast or east, if you want to say, of the old uh, King Creek Branch of the Louisville and Nashville Railroad's Birmingham Railroad Division. And uh, this is a walking trail now, which is pretty nice. And this view right here is looking back towards uh, Black Creek Park. And just around the corner up there is uh, curves around and heads all the way past uh, Shady Grove Road where there's a uh, car park. And then it makes a turn to the north to, at Mineral Springs. And this line right, it went all the way out past Lens Crossing and uh, to the Banner Mine and had a branch for the Banner Mine and uh, had a uh, spur line, a uh, branch line if you want to say for the Sayree Mine. And of course this continued all across the uh, Locust Fork River and went all the way to uh, Preco, Skeleton Creek, Preco, the Gamma, Wegra, Colta Mines, all of Pratt Consolidated and later Alabama Byproducts Corporation. But uh, they've done a really good job with this walking trail, it's nice. So I think when this was built, there was a total of, uh, might be off by just a few, but plus or minus, but I think 17 wooden trestles with the highest one being across Newfound Creek, which is several miles further this way. But uh, anyway, I mean, they had to build this whole rail bed up, cut through the sides of these high ridges just a incredible work all done by hand back then uh, can't remember if they did have some uh, early model steam shovels on this line I don't think they did this was all done by hand so but anyway we're just uh, checking out some of the old mine sites here that are along the uh, rail bed here they're all closed but they're neat to see anyway okay just uh, wanted to get uh, Getting some shade here from around the sun. And this is one of the huge uh, cuts they did to make this rail line. Just cut right through the side of this ridge line here. And uh, this, this rail bed stayed in operation up into the 1980s, late 80s. Uh, because the last mine, if I believe correct, that was being serviced was the Chitopa mine, opened by Alabama Byproducts Corporation, and then when they were bought by the Drummond Coal Corporation, uh, this is the line that the coal was carried on all the way to the byproducts plant in Tarrant, the company's byproduct coke plant. So, but anyway, it's a... Uh, uh, just really nice what they did with the walking trail. So, but, uh, it's an incredible job of cutting through this. And, you know, of course, there's more examples of this all the way along the line. So, but, uh, anyway, we're gonna check out some more, uh, coal mine sites. Uh, on the trail. Okay, just uh, right up there, about a good 60 feet or more is the rail bed. And this is uh, another one of the old coal drift mines right here. Actually, uh, I guess this is where the coal seam was. And they just took it right up underneath the rail bed right here. So. Not too much left of it. They probably had a tramway line going all the way up over there. And uh, I think that's the way I'm gonna go out. There's a section of rail right there. But uh, there's several of these. It's hard to even uh, 
I see where some of them are because they just completely covered over. But uh, that's one of the old drift mines right there. I'll try to do some more research because these are so spread out. Like I said, Cosmo mines, the Rilma mines, that's on the other side. Arcadia mines, that's down by Colberg. El Dorado mines, uh, Cliff mines, and they had a couple more. Uh, I think maybe the Watts mines. But anyway, this is just uh, one of the old uh, coal drift mine sites of Pratt Consolidated Coal and Iron Hill. Pratt Consolidated Coal Company. So, anyway, we'll just head out this way. Okay, uh, just right in that dip right there is one I was just at. And I think there were three in this series. This is another one right here. There's a section of rail. There's cross ties everywhere. Of course, when they dismantled the line and took the rails off, they just chucked the cross ties off the side of the rail bed. Down, down, down to the side. Be interesting if you had a lot of time. How old some of these are, they might even have date nails or something now. But that would be a all day exploring trip, but this is another one right here. You can see it just cross ties everywhere. And that's where the rail berm is up top there. So probably just gonna go out this way. That doesn't look like a steep climb, but all those leaves are wet. And I mean you just even with good good boots, good traction, you just slip and slide everywhere. But anyway, you can definitely tell I didn't know there was a rail bed there because just cross ties, rail sections everywhere. So all right, and we're just gonna keep heading on this way. All right. Made it back up on the uh rail bed here walking trail and I think uh, there's might be a few more down here to uh, check out before uh, into this little early morning field trip out here but uh, I tell you what it's peaceful I mean that is nice it is peaceful out here you know, back 120 years ago, this was the wilderness. And when they built this line, I think it was done in Leyland construction. Now, done, now present day done construction. They did the grading for this line right here. They had a lot of exclusive contracts with uh, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad and, and other railroads in the Birmingham area that were doing business. Uh, I'm not sure if they did the trussle work, but uh, anyway, massive undertaking. Hundreds of men. They had uh, camps spread out along this way. Had to have everything, man. Carpentry shops, blacksmith shops, uh, commissaries, portable commissaries or kitchens, if you might want to say for the men sleeping quarters, tents, I mean, you name it. And each time the rail line was extended, you know, they would bring the rails out and the cross ties and they would start laying them. So anyway, we'll just uh, keep heading on back down the trail here. This leads towards uh, Shady Grove Road and there's a car park down there where you can walk this trail. Okay, so got the rail bed directly in front of me. And uh, this is uh, another one of the old coal drift mine sites of Pratt Consolidated uh, Coal Company. And that, that was a pretty big drift mine back in the day. So if I recall, the average coal seam was about uh, three feet, two to three feet, 36 inches at most. So it wasn't a big band of coal. So and uh so these were in operation about 1904 to 1910 1912 or so then they just played out so that's usually what drift mines do and then over here is its sister mine 
sister drift mine with it heading in the opposite direction. Uh, probably for the, uh, I don't get hung up on these vines for the same, uh, coal seam right here. So, right here, here's the, here's the remains of the other coal drift mine right here. So you can see there's absolutely nothing left and, you know, back in the, 20s and 30s and 40s, even into the 50s. A lot of these drift mines out here played uh, played well for underground moonshine stills. There's a lot of newspaper reports in this area of sheriffs and revenue agents raiding moonshine stills that were hidden inside these old coal drift mines. So, uh, quite a few accounts of uh, raids out in this area. So. Either this flows naturally or the sheriff's and revenue agents blew it. Keep anybody from ever having an underground moonshine still in one of these mines again. So, anyway, always a lot of history. So, the rail bed's right there, and we'll just get back on it and keep walking. Those uh, two drift mines are up there. You can see the remains of a tailings pile, and they probably had a uh, wooden tipple right here. And uh, l and probably had a siding. You can see how wide this rail bed is here. Probably had a siding straight behind this milepost marker. Looks like uh, it says 388. I don't want somebody paint over that. But I need to get back home, pull up some of those charts. Make sure, I think it's uh, 388. Uh, l and measured the distance of the rail lines from their home office in Louisville uh, so when you see the mile markers this is how far away it would be from Louisville Kentucky the home of uh, Louisville and Nashville Railroad so that's how those mile markers were set out but anyway I'll, it says uh, I think it is 388 right there so but anyway might be another one or two more around the corner as we head on back but like I said, man, really nice walking trail, peaceful. The only exception, haven't seen one deer. I've been off in the woods, I've seen quite a few deer trails. But I tell you, just this year, just no deer, not one deer. And you see plenty of the walking trails, but no deer. So maybe they realize it's hunting season. So, all right, we'll just keep uh, heading on back towards the car park. Okay, I think this may be the last one for heading around the corner to the car park. And of course, this one's just right here on the rail bed next to it. I mean, so this is uh, another one of the uh, coal drift mines of Pratt Consolidated right here. Right there. So, uh, dare to say, all these drift mines are going after the same coal seam. I need to re-familiarize myself with the coal seam here. So, which one they were going after. No bigger than 36 inches. So, but anyway, like I said, back to the trail. And I think the walking trail keeps going around all the way to Mineral Springs. And back 100 years ago, Ellen and Birmingham Mineral Railroad at Mineral Springs had a small uh, rail yard uh, there. So, because they had several branch lines, one going to Arcadia, another one going to Rilma, and years later, DuPont put their uh, explosive works, or chemical works, if you want to say, but really dynamite works, on a branch line at Watson. So, anyway, but all right, just up ahead is the uh, entrance to the uh, trail, and uh, nice walk, man, nice place to come, get a piece of history walking this rail bed, so, all right, get a little early morning trip. <laughs> 